everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Today we're gonna do a couple harder examples of condensing and expanding logarithmic expressions. So a lot of students struggle with this, especially when the examples get more complicated. I already made a couple of videos on these. You can click up here if you wanna see, it's more of an introduction, kind of introducing the idea. So in this video, I'm gonna do a couple of harder examples that you may see come up on your exam. These will be great practice. So I encourage you to pause the video and try these on your own, of course, and then press play if you get stuck and wanna check your answer. All right, let's go ahead and start. 21 times log of the cube root of x plus two times log of x plus one minus five log of x. So where do I start? Well, the first thing I would do is move all these factors up here in the exponents, right? Express factors as powers. I can move all of these up here as powers because I, I can't even combine these until I get rid of these things being multiplied out in front. I really can't combine them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And that's pretty much always the first step when you condense. When you expand, it's the opposite. That's the last step, right? The last step when you expand is, okay, let, let me bring the exponents down, but we'll get to that in a minute. So you do the opposite. You go the opposite direction when you condense. So I'm bringing the 21 up there. So now I have log, log of cube root x to the 21st power. And again, these parentheses are optional. You don't have to write them. I personally do, but it depends on, you can, you can leave them if you don't want to write them. I just like it. It makes it clearer to me what's in the log and what's, you know what I mean? So then I move the two up here as well in the exponents. I'm just using my basic log properties. Hopefully you have either them memorized or a sheet in front of you. And I wrote my five here, but I want to move that up to the top, remember? So I have log of x to the fifth, log x to the fifth. So now what? Let's see. I can combine these. Let's do some side work and see how I can combine that. Cube root of x is like saying what? x to the one-third power. Well, if I have x to the one-third power to the 21st power, power to a power, remember your exponent rules, you multiply. So this actually gives me what? x to the 21 over 3, which is just x to the 7th. I can rewrite this whole thing as x to the 7th. Well, not the whole thing, but everything after the log, right? So let me just do one more little simplifying step. Oh, I messed up that plus. I'm sorry. Plus log x plus 1 squared minus log x to the fifth. I guess I could have erased instead of rewriting that whole thing. Sorry about that. All right, now we can start combining stuff. Again, I move from left to right. That's how I like to do it. And the biggest mistake I see students make is that they go from here to one log altogether. Do it one step at a time. Combine these two. That's your first step. And then combine that with this, right? So now I have log... And since I have addition, what's going to happen? It's going to become multiplication, right? I have log of x seventh, x to the 7th times x plus 1 squared, times x plus 1 squared, right? That's all in this log minus log of x to the 5th is still out here, okay? Now I have log minus log, both the same base, so I can do one more combining step, Okay? And what, what is it going to be? From subtraction, it goes to division, right? So my last step is log, what? X to the seventh, X plus one. Everything in here is up top, right? Squared all over X to the fifth. Oh, wait, there's actually some simplifying I can do. X to the seventh divided by X to the fifth. I can do top exponent minus bottom exponent. So I can actually cross this out and rewrite this as a two, so let me go ahead and rewrite this one more time. Equals, final answer, equals. I'll write it right up here. Log x squared, x plus 1 squared, and this is your final answer. I guess technically you could, no, you wouldn't want to do that. This is a great answer. All right, so let's go ahead and expand a logarithm now. This is a harder, more tedious example. I encourage you to try it on your own. If you can do this, I feel like you should be confident for your exam. So let's go ahead and try it. I know I said earlier that you deal with the exponents last. That's the last thing you do is write the powers as factors. That's not always the case, especially when you have something like this, where this cubed is applying to everything. This means this whole thing times itself three times. So I need to get rid of this three somehow. And what I see a lot of professors do and instructors is they'll bring the three out in front. But why I don't like that is because when the three comes out in front, you have to make sure you keep brackets because that three applies to everything. And when you start splitting this up, it's a real common mistake to to leave the three just attached to that first log and forget that it goes to everything. So what I like to do is I like to use exponent rules, a power to a power, right, and multiply. But I may have to make sure this, this three gets multiplied to that two, that five, and that three. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I rewrite this as log 
And again, you could bring the three out in front. You just got to be real careful. When you start splitting this up, that three is being multiplied to everything. And you're going to multiply everything by three at the very end. So I'm going to do it this way. X minus three. Whoops. X minus three. Two times three, that's six. And then I have five times three, that's X to the 15th power. X plus one, let's see, three times three, that is nine. X plus one to the ninth. So now I can start splitting stuff up. And the thing is, I got this divided by this. So I have to do that division first. I don't want to reach in here and start splitting stuff up. This whole thing is being divided by this whole denominator, right? So I need to do the division first. So I can split it up as subtraction. I'm going to go ahead and come over here and do this. So log x minus 3 to the 6th minus log, what, x to the 15th x plus one to the ninth. Okay? So, now I can split this up one more time because now this step is pretty much done. I'm going to bring that six out in front and that's going to be it. And I have minus all of this. So this is where the mistake is made. This is where the mistake is always made because I'm going to split this up. It's a multiplication so it becomes addition. But what happens is this minus follows both of these. This minus applies to everything. So when I do split this up, I have minus parentheses log x to the 15th plus log x plus 1 to the ninth, right? The parentheses means minus this and minus this. So if I want to get rid of these parentheses, I have to distribute my subtraction to both of these terms. That's where the mistake is always made. So just make sure to be careful on that part. And I'm going to go ahead and actually, well, I'll do that all in the next step because that'll be the last thing to do is bring all the powers down. So now I'll get rid of these parentheses and distribute this negative as well as bring the powers out in front as factors and that will be my final expanded logarithmic expression. I struggled saying that word for some reason there. 15 is out in front, log x, but again, minus, that distributes, 9 log x plus 1. All right, so look what would happen if we would have pulled our 3 out. We would have eventually pulled our 2 down and multiplied to 3 and gotten 6. Our 5 would have come down, right? We would have gotten to the same answer. So either way work. I prefer this way, but that's just me. And don't get confused and think that you can separate subtraction or addition inside a log. You can't. So this is the final expanded form. And I hope this video helped you. If it did, make sure to click like. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave comments below. I wish all of you the best of luck. Keep flexing those brain muscles and keep making those brain gains.